What skills do you need to land your dream mechanical engineering job and be a successful mechanical engineer? This is the million dollar question that I see many mechanical engineering students asking about, which is totally expected because schools just don't tell us these things. Having worked over four years as a mechanical engineer at both medium and large companies, I have a pretty good idea of what employers are looking for in a candidate during interviews. So in this video, I'll be sharing all of the essential skills that will make you a standout mechanical engineer. So what exactly do employers want besides the 10 years of experience that none of us seem to have? I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything here because I want every single one of you watching this video to land your dream job and to succeed at it. Let's be honest here. Employers don't care if you got straight A's in your classes, participated in rocket propulsion or robotics club, or worked in a research group. What they actually and only care about is if you have the right set of people and technical skills to save the company money and make them richer and more competitive. You may be wondering, how do I do that? I'm not the CEO, I'm just an average mechanical engineer. Well, from the hiring manager's perspective, the ideal mechanical engineer will one, be able to work with people from all walks of life, whether it's other engineers, product and project managers, supply chain managers, senior executives, technicians, or machinists to bring a product from a concept to mass production according to schedule. This will require you to exhibit passion, leadership, drive, discipline, and to be an effective communicator. To go along with these people skills, the ideal mechanical engineer will have the right technical skills needed to deliver a final product that's functional, reliable, ergonomic, and cheap to make. This means having the ability to design, analyze, test, and optimize mechanical parts so that they one, meet technical specifications, and two, can be manufactured and assembled economically and efficiently. If you have the set of skills needed to meet these three requirements, employers are going to be fighting over you and giving you promotions left and right because the company is saving tons of time and money and making big bucks because of you. We'll start with the essential technical skills that you need to master. Number one is computer-aided design or CAD for both 3D models and 2D drawings. CAD is something you definitely need to get good at. It doesn't matter too much which software you learn because CAD skills are easily transferable. Just pick one or two popular ones to learn such as SOLIDWORKS or Creo. Learn how to model various geometries, mechanical parts, and assemblies, and all of the different file formats we work with like STEP, IGIS, DXF, DWG, and STL. Create 2D drawings out of the 3D models that you design and reverse the process by catting up 3D models from 2D drawings. Creating clean and professional technical drawings, knowing how to call out basic and critical dimensions, and knowing what tolerance precision to use will save you a lot of time and headache down the road. Machinists and vendors will reference these drawings when making the parts that mechanical engineers design. So they'll give you a hard time if they can't read your drawings. I learned this the hard way. Number two is computer aided engineering or CAE software. There are two types, finite element analysis or FEA for modeling solids and computational fluid dynamics or CFD for modeling fluids. If you can, I recommend learning both because many real world problems involve complicated solid and fluid interactions and you'll need to use both to predict and optimize the performance of your designs. In terms of what software to use, start with SOLIDWORKS or Creo Simulation or whatever your school has to offer. Many companies use ANSYS, but based on my experience, schools generally don't offer it due to its hefty price tag. You can also try out some open source FEA and CFD softwares like Moose, Calculix, and OpenFoam. Set up as many simulations as you can. Don't just learn what buttons to press. Understand how to clean up geometry, create a quality mesh, apply the right boundary conditions and loads, interpret results, understand different kinds of failure modes, and develop an intuition for modeling different scenarios. Number three is manufacturing processes. This might arguably be the most important skill to have because your knowledge in this area could potentially help the company save significant time and money and ultimately determines whether the parts you design can be manufactured efficiently and cheaply and determines the overall functionality of the final product. So learn as much as you can about 
about all of the different types of manufacturing processes like 3D printing, welding, sheet metal operations, injection molding, vacuum forming, casting, CNC machining, and surface treatments. You'll need to have a working knowledge of design principles and rules of thumb for each manufacturing process and answer questions like, how should a part feature such as thickness, screw bosses, or ribs be designed for injection molding versus 3D printing versus machining? Based on the manufacturing process, what materials can be used? Is the manufacturing process suitable for low volume or high volume applications? And what will be the part cost? If your school has a machine shop or 3D printing lab, try to be there 24 seven and learn how to operate all of the machines. Ones that are good to know include a CNC mill, CNC lathe, SLA or FDM 3D printer, drill press, bandsaw, welding machine, bench grinder, press brake machine, and plastic injection molding machine. Get your hands dirty and make the parts that you design for class or for a club and assemble them using various fasteners and tools such as calipers, drills, allen wrenches, screwdrivers, and vice grips. You'll be surprised by how much you learn through trial and error. Remember that machinists are your best friend and pick their brains as much as possible. If you know how to correctly design and optimize parts for several manufacturing processes like CNC machining, injection molding, and casting, it's gonna be hard for your boss not to like you. Now, I know a lot of schools don't have an accessible machine shop for students, so your best bet would be to join an engineering club or research group whose work requires mechanical design and manufacturing. I would also highly recommend finding a co-op or summer internship as early on as possible starting freshman year of university. You can join all the clubs that you want, but at the end of the day, nothing beats the real world experience that employers value so much. Number four is instrumentation and design of experiments. Mechanical engineers test tons of products to quantify and validate their performance. So understand what's needed and how to set up a test or experiment, including basic circuits, data acquisition systems, microcontrollers, different types of sensors, and various motors. A really good and fun way to learn about these things is by getting an Arduino, Raspberry Pi, or Elego. You can pick one up on Amazon for around 30 or 40 bucks and start playing around with it. I'll leave a link in the description below for any of you who are interested. Number five is the engineering theory you learn in school. The important ones are heat transfer, thermodynamics, statics and dynamics, materials, fluid mechanics, and machine elements. You don't need to get A's in every class. That shouldn't be your ultimate goal. Your goal should be to master all of the key concepts and know how to apply them. So you might be asking, how do I know which concepts are important? Well, Machinery's Handbook, this thick thing right here, is an essential book that I always recommend every mechanical engineer to read. It literally includes and summarizes everything you need to know. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. Number six is tolerance stack up analysis. A mechanical engineer without question needs to be an expert at tolerances. Tolerance just means the allowable amount of variation of any given part dimension. If a part needs to be two inches long, should I call out a limit, unilateral or bilateral tolerance? Can it be 1.9 inches or does it need a tighter tolerance, say 1.99 or 1.999 inches? Keep in mind that the tolerances you specify for part dimensions on a drawing will directly affect the part cost and yields. Generally, a product contains hundreds if not thousands of parts, so it's the mechanical engineer's job to leverage tolerance stack-up analysis to ensure that all of the components fit together properly. Familiarize yourself with the different kinds of tolerance stack-up analysis, like worst case, root sum square, and Monte Carlo. Understand the pros and cons of each and actually do a calculation using Excel or 3D CS. You'll thank me later. Number seven is something that's often overlooked, but very important, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing or GDNT. GDNT is the universal language for communicating tolerances and geometry on a 2D technical drawing. That's why it's important that you know what all the symbols like control frames and datums represent and how to call them out on a drawing according to ASME Y14.5 standards. You can practice making drawings using GDNT and essentially any CAD software. Number eight is failure modes and effects analysis or FMEA. Before a product is mass produced and sold, mechanical engineers use FMEA to identify all potential failures, the consequences of those failures, and to rank these failures based on severity of their consequences 
consequences, how frequently they might occur, and how easily can they be detected. For a cell phone, that might include the battery exploding, overheating, the screen freezing, and the camera showing a black screen. Definitely get comfortable setting up an FMEA study. Based on my experience, schools don't teach this, but there are a ton of great resources on YouTube and Google. Number nine is programming. This isn't a must have skill for mechanical engineers, but more of a nice to have. Learn MATLAB or preferably Python because it's open source, easy to pick up, and can be used for a wide array of applications, including machine learning, data analysis, and testing. It will make you much more efficient and competitive on the job. Now, the second type of skill I want to talk about is soft skills, or what I like to call the intangibles that don't show up on a resume. This includes being an effective communicator, presenter, and listener. Mechanical engineers work with all kinds of different people, including their bosses, marketing, sourcing, other engineers, suppliers, customers, and senior executives. You need to be able to hold a conversation, articulate your thoughts and ideas clearly and know what other people are saying. If you're uncomfortable talking to other people, you have to push yourself out of your comfort zone and just start talking to random people. Don't think about it too much. Start by getting to know your classmates and professors as much as you can. They will be your go-to people for recommendation letters and references when you start applying to jobs or graduate school. You can also consider taking a public speaking course. The more you talk to people, the easier it will become. I speak from experience. The second soft skill that is never mentioned is creativity or imagination. A huge part of a mechanical engineer's job is to design products, processes, and tests. Designing anything is 30% creativity and 70% technical knowledge. You need creativity to come up with innovative and feasible ideas. Do things that promote creativity, like exercising, watching movies, playing games like Drawful or Pictionary, learning a new instrument, or exploring new places. It's scientifically proven that creativity can be developed over time. One thing I like to do to exercise my brain is to take any object around me, imagine what the internals look like, and draw different cross-section views of the object. This exercise really helps improve your creativity, imagination, and drafting skills. The third and last skill is multitasking and time management. We work on many projects in parallel and need to keep track of multiple timelines, deadlines, and milestones. Project managers will usually remind us of these things with their fancy Gantt charts, but ultimately it's up to us to understand the deliverables, set objectives for ourselves, and prioritize the million of daily tasks that we need to finish. Timing is very important for a company, and if a project is delayed, it means losing a lot of money and wasting valuable resources. All of the skills mentioned so far can be learned and developed. However, passion and attitude are two things that are innate and are channeled from within. They can be the deciding factors for employers when choosing between two candidates. Even if you have to fake it, that's perfectly fine. You just have to smile a lot, give off positive vibes, be enthusiastic and energetic, and be confident during an interview. Preparation is also one thing that goes a long way. If you don't prepare for an interview, what makes you think that employers want to hire you? You're not only wasting your time, but also the employer's time. Do your due diligence and research everything about the company's history, products, financials, its competitors, their company mission, the challenges they are facing, and their growth strategy. Employers love candidates who are prepared and ready. The majority of interviews for mechanical engineering roles will also include a technical portion, and you also want to prepare for that as well. During senior year of college, I started applying for full-time mechanical engineering positions and bombed so many interviews because of the technical portion. There were very few resources online, so I literally had no idea what to expect. To help you guys out, I put together a list of 80 common mechanical engineering technical interview questions that I think are really good to know and hopefully will help you ace your next interview. Check out the link in the description below if you're interested. The last thing I'll mention is perfect your one-page resume and have a design portfolio to complement it. You should think of your resume as the key to getting interviews, 
So make sure everything is spelled correctly, no grammatical errors, use active voice, don't make sentences overly wordy, use a good template, and most importantly, please don't just simply state what you did. Always remember that employers care a lot about money, so every project or activity that you mention should demonstrate how you reduced cost, increased efficiency, or improved the performance or ergonomics of whatever you're talking about. For example, if you only participate participated in robotics club for two weeks at your school and wrote participated in robotics club and built an articulated robot on your resume, that's not going to fly. Try to say something like led the design efforts of an articulated robot and replaced all custom parts with off the shelf components resulting in a $20,000 cost reduction. I know how hard it can be to write a resume if you don't have a lot of experience. Trust me, I was a student myself but try to make your time worthwhile and be an active member in any of the clubs or research groups you join. Try not to just design the parts in CAD. Go actually make the parts, which will force you to talk to machinists. After making the parts, assemble them. Document the entire process, whether that's taking pictures or videos, and put together a design portfolio. Remember to start early and get one or two internships under your belt. If you put in the work, good things will happen. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.